I was thinking about it this morning and realizing that it's been almost 10 years since I started raising buffalo. I remember the first buffalo auctions that I went to really vividly. There was this look and this feel that I'd never seen or smelled or felt before. And there was this one auction in particular that really kind of struck me. It was one out in the middle of Kansas, out in the Flint Hills. The wind blows so strong sometimes that sometimes it just feels like it's inhabitable. The first time I remember going to this auction in particular, my brother-in-law came out with me. And it was a really cold day that day and the wind was really strong. I remember sitting in the stands and watching the auction take place and as much as I was enjoying it, I really wanted it to be over because I came completely underdressed. The wind was probably 30 to 40 miles an hour that day and I was wearing a jean jacket. It was not something that you wanted to wear when it was literally in the teens. Can't imagine what the wind chill would have been. That first time going to this auction really left an impression on me. It was such a beautiful, scenic place to be, but also on the other hand, you couldn't imagine how people would live out there and thrive out there. And what's funny is after looking back on it 10 years later, we actually live in an area that is not too far from that. I feel like it's one of those pieces of landscape that you really can't appreciate unless you spend some time there and really immerse yourself in the experience. So fast forward 10 years to now, the auction is still running. It's always in the fall and it's always one of the first ones in our area. So I decided to head back and see what had changed. Pulling up, there was a sea of cars. Walking up the small trail to the open area where everyone had crowded to put their bid in on the buffalo that they really wanted, it was just a nostalgic feel for me. It was a beautiful setting. The temperature was warmer. It wasn't so brisk and bitter cold like the first time that I showed up there, but it still was windy. It was just one of those classic Flint Hills, Kansas days. 500, the auction had already started when I walked up and they were going through auctioning off the bull calves and the heifer calves and it looked like a lot of really good animals. There was a lot of people too. The stands were completely full and the workers up on top were really on their game. They have these really long poles that they can reach down from the catwalk and they can use flags to get the buffalo to go down the alleys wherever they want them to without actually getting in there with them. It's a really nice, well-built facility allowing the worker to be on top and work the animals without getting in there with them. They have an open air arena where you have one person on each corner and the buffalo that are up for auction, they get run out into that arena so everyone can take a look. And those guys in the corner have poles or flags trying to get the buffalo to move outside of the arena whenever that buffalo gets sold and moved on. One of the things that I noticed and I thought was absolutely fascinating was the first time that I went, they really had a hard time with those buffalo getting out of the arena. Everything's painted brown and everything's dark. And when they ran that buffalo in or a group of buffalo into that arena, they would do circles in there. And then they would open that gate up and the buffalo really didn't see the path out. They really just started doing circles and over and over and they had a hard time moving them out. And what I noticed that they changed is they painted the panel behind the exit gate white. 
So whenever the exit gate opens up, now they see a white alley and the buffalo just run down to that white alley. It really created an environment that allowed for a low stress. It allowed the buffalo to move into the arena, get auctioned off, and then when that exit gate opened up, it looked like there was light at the end of the tunnel, essentially, and the buffalo wanted to run out. That's one example of a really well-built facility, a low-stress environment like I talk about all the time. You don't want to work these animals like you work cattle. You don't want to hoop and holler with them. You don't want to drive them if you don't have to. They are a lot more susceptible to stress because they are a wild animal than cattle are, and so you want to work them differently. Nine. Look at that. The auction seemed to go pretty smooth, other than one of the buffalo bulls wanting to snuggle with one of the workers. I 
Fortunately, it was pretty uneventful. He was able to get out from behind that barricade before that buffalo came in and the buffalo was uninjured. But there's times like that. Um, buffalo are unpredictable. They're not mean at all, but they are a wild animal and they can be unpredictable whenever you're working with them. That's one of the reasons why you don't want to drive them and you want a low stress environment. They are a beautiful creature and they deserve our respect. 1500 after everything was said and done and the last gavel hammered down and everyone had purchased all the buffalo that they wanted to it was time for loadout typically what happens is the animals that you purchase usually go into a separate pin. And then whenever you pull around with your truck and trailer, they open that pin up to an alleyway that runs those animals straight into the trailer. It's really seamless at most auctions that I've been to. And this one was no exception. The state of Kansas does a really good job with this auction. All of these animals come from this refuge that the buffalo roam on. There's buffalo and there's elk out on this high fenced area, but because the buffalo are fenced in, there's only so many buffalo you can have out on the preserve. So the nature of it is that you have to sell off the excess every year. And that's where the auction comes into play. Buyers come in and they want to purchase the excess animals that the state had too many of. I really enjoyed going back today. It was a really kind of a surreal experience. First time I went there, it was blistering cold, like I said. But not only that, I didn't know anybody in the Buffalo community and I didn't have any experience for myself. And then going back today and seeing friends that I've built relationships over the last 10 years with and then seeing these animals and just being in awe just like I was 10 years ago. It's funny because I have thought after 10 years that would go by, I thought maybe I would lose some of that wanderlust. But looking back at today's event, I really haven't lost anything. I think I've only really gained more appreciation for this beautiful, magnificent animal. And I really can't wait for the next 10 years.